This course is Light-Based Techniques in Forensic Science. Hello there! I am Jamika Kim Lopez Mabanglo and I will be your facilitator for this lesson. I hope everybody will learn in this topic. Are you ready to learn? Let's start! We are in Module 1, Light for Investigating Crime Scenes, Lesson 1.1, Theory of Light and Overview. A crime scene examination is a key step in every investigation. To analytically interpret the information carried by material evidence, proper screening of the crime scene must be performed and traces must be individuated, identified, and collected. The human eye is only sensitive to visible radiation and since many traces are invisible to the naked eye, various types of elimination and visualization techniques were devised to aid the activity of the examination teams. This lesson is about the overview on the theory of light as well as the electromagnetic spectrum and its types. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to define the electromagnetic spectrum in detail and identify the types of electromagnetic radiation. In all our lessons, I have some few reminders. First, you need to stay focused. Listen to the lesson and understand what is the lecture all about. The second reminder is, you need to have your pen, paper, and module ready. Because one of the most effective ways in order to grasp knowledge is to take down notes. I am not telling you to write it all down, but you need to focus on the main idea, as well as it will serve as an aid in reviewing your lessons. And the third reminder is, if you have any questions, you can post it in our group or in our educational platform. These are all the contents of the presentation. It has the lesson, learning objectives, the discussion, learning activity, learning assessment, and learning sources. If you are ready, then let's start! Just click the button to begin. As we will emerge more clearly later in this lesson, exploiting the interactions between light and matter is a very effective method to detect latent traces and to find information on a crime scene. We have always conferred godlike powers on light since darkness is one of the few things we instinctively fear, but we had no concept what light was throughout all of the antiquity. In the 17th century, figures like as Newton and Huygens studied with light, but it was in the 19th century that James Clerk Maxwell produced a more comprehensive explanation of light, which we now call classical electromagnetism. This theory shows light as a transverse wave made up of oscillating electric and magnetic fields that are perpendicular to the wave's motion and at right angles to each other. Light is electromagnetic radiation and it is a radiant energy that propagates as a wave. Because light behaves like an electromagnetic wave, it is also referred to as electromagnetic radiation. Light waves have a wavelength, which is the distance between their tips, and a frequency, which is the number of the waves that pass by a point in a given amount of time. Frequency is also a very important parameter because it is related to the energy of the electromagnetic radiation. The wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional because the shorter the wave, the more waves can pass by per second, resulting in a higher frequency. In other words, the higher the frequency, the greater the energy of the radiation. For practical and historical reasons, the electromagnetic spectrum such as the set of all the possible radiations has been broken down in several regions according to wavelength even though the physical behavior of electromagnetic radiation does not change as a function of frequency or energy. The human eye is only sensitive to the visible range. A quite small portion of the whole electromagnetic spectrum with wavelengths compromise between 380 and 780 nanometer, which is a significant limit in the field of crime scene examination where several traces remain latent when examined with this light. 
It should also be kept in mind that the sensitivity of the human eye is not equal for all the wavelengths of the visible range but has a maximum for green and decreases significantly towards red and blue or violet. The use of detectors, rather than the naked eye, when working with these wavelengths can significantly improve the chances of success in the search for tiny traces. The range of all electromagnetic frequencies is known as the electromagnetic spectrum. The spectrum can be represented by a diagram like on the screen, on the left are the waves with the longest wavelengths and on the lowest frequencies and energies. Toward the right, the wavelengths become shorter and the frequencies and energies become higher. The diagram also shows the different parts of the spectrum such as the radio waves, the microwaves, the infrared light, visible light, ultraviolet light, x-rays, and gamma rays. The EM spectrum is a smooth, gradual progression from the lowest frequencies to the highest. Divisions between the different parts of the spectrum are useful but not exact. As you can see from the diagram, some of the sections overlap. Before proceeding with the various observation techniques which may be useful during the examination of a crime scene, it may be useful to summarize the different phenomena which may happen when light interacts with matter. The discussion will focus on a reflection geometry of illumination because in most of the practical instances, the traces observed are opaque and not transparent. When light containing all the visible wavelengths such as the white light impinges an object, the object will absorb only certain wavelengths whereas unabsorbed wavelengths will be reflected. This latter wavelength will be perceived as a color. The color seen will be the complementary colors to the absorbed colors. And the next slide shows the color wheel. So colors that are opposite on the wheel are complementary. In other words, the object will absorb some of the colors contained in white light, allowing only the unabsorbed hues to be reflected back and to reach the eye of the observer. In our daily life, we are very familiar with the absorption of visible light and the vision of colors, but the same physical phenomenon happens when the impinging light is from other regions of the electromagnetic spectrum, such as the ultraviolet or the infrared light. Scattering is another phenomenon that may happen when an object is illuminated with light. When the wavelength of the incoming light is comparable with the size of the illuminated objects, these start vibrating with the same frequency of light and they become spherical sources of radiation. When this happens, some of the light is diffused at 360 degrees around the object, blurring the purely geometrical propagation of light. In fact, when light interacts with smooth and shiny surfaces, the radiation is reflected, concerning the perpendicular to the surface with an angle that equals the angle of incidence just like what it shows in Figure A. This mode is called specular reflection. In contrast, if light encounters a rough surface, scattering occurs and it is reflected in all the directions of a space, diffusing the radiation in the surrounding space, such as in Figure B, and in such a case, the phenomenon is called diffuse reflection. The next topic is about fluorescence. It is a further phenomenon that is very useful for detecting traces. So, when a molecule absorbs light, it absorbs energy which is used to promote electrons to an excited state. This excitation may happen by the emission of light of the same wavelength with the concurrent return of the electrons to their ground state. However, an alternative mechanism called fluorescence exists in which some non-radiative decays such as processes in which energy is lost without emission of radiation accompany the return to the ground state by the emission of light. In other words, when fluorescence happens, a compound absorbs light of a particular wavelength and energy and re-emits radiation with a longer wavelength and lower energy. Many biological traces display fluorescence, which therefore is a very efficient method for their detection. The reflected colors are what have a chance to make it to your eyes, so they make up the object's color. Fluorescence is a trippy happening related to absorption that can give you access to colors normally outside the visible spectrum. So when you see something fluorescence, you're kind of seeing a secret world via normal vision. So chemicals like a yellow highlighter, spironine, have structures that absorb light from the ultraviolet range of the spectrum. Wavelengths that our eyes can see. 
When these molecules absorb this funky light, they become excited into a higher state of energy and release most of this extra energy in the form of visible light, while the rest is released as heat. This means the objects are giving back more energy than they received from the visible light source which explains their gleaming vibrancy under UV. And that is the end of our discussion. Let us proceed to our learning activity. Your assignment will serve as a learning activity. Your assignment for this lesson is posted in your learning management system. Your learning assessment is the quiz posted in your learning management system. For the references used in the lesson, these are my sources. For the graphics or pictures used in this presentation, these are the internet sources. 